Hello, Sam. Naughty, naughty. They give you bonus points for it. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the enemies and rivals from TV who end up falling in love. A few spoilers for these relationships. It's only 10.30. Want to break up at midnight? That works. Okay. <laughs> Number 20, Matthew and Mary Crawley, Downton Abbey. When Mary Crawley first meets the middle-class male heir to her family's fortune, she and Matthew don't get along. Very good, my lady. Lady Mary, I hope you didn't misunderstand me. I was only joking. Of course. And I agree. The whole thing is a complete joke. Mary is condescending and rude, while Matthew struggles with fitting in with the aristocracy and the new expectations placed on him. However, despite many obstacles standing in their way, including scandals and other partners, these two distant cousins discover genuine affection for one another and later love. They marry and have a son, and while their love story is cut tragically short, while it lasts, Matthew and Mary's relationship is entertaining and beautiful. You'll be my Mary always, because mine is the true Mary. Do you ever wonder how happy you've made me? Number 19, Sergio Marquina, the professor, and Raquel Morillo, Lisbon, money heist. Even the most meticulously planned heists can have unexpected complications. But the mastermind falling for the lead detective in charge? Well, there's no planning for that. Sergio Marquina, better known as the professor, at first gets close to Inspector Raquel Morillo while trying to manipulate her investigation into his team's heist at the Spanish Royal Mint. Estaba todo planeado, Raquel. Todo, estaba todo. However, they both develop genuine feelings for one another, which leads to Raquel not only letting Sergio escape, but also the detective joining their gang and the duo forming a relationship. Their bond is tested by the circumstances of further heists, yet always endures. Aburillos. A pesar de la diversidad, lo que se quieren estos dos, eh? Number 18, Davy Vishwakumar and Ben Gross, Never Have I Ever. Davy and Ben begin the show as academic rivals, often competing over their success in the classroom and outside of it. Do you think you can set aside your rivalry for the good of the class? Well, of course, Mr. Shapiro. A great idea, as always. I agree. In fact, I liked your idea even more than he did. As hilarious as their mutual loathing and creative insults are, it's even better seeing them slowly realize that the sparks between them have a romantic edge to them. Even after getting together, though, Ben V isn't without issues. Their on-again, off-again relationship is every bit as tumultuous as their rivalry. But ultimately, they were made for each other, and we're glad to see them get together in the end. What? I love you. Love you too, ben. Number 17, Quinn Penske and Logan Reese, Zoe 101. This duo's differences often leave them at odds with each other in high school. Quinn is a quirky inventor, while Logan is an often superficial jock. Their mutual dislike is evident throughout the show. I am Quinn. I must go get a sprocket from my home planet, Dorkon. I am Quinn <laughs> from Dorkon. <laughs> so, you guys think I'm a dork? However, after a breakup, Logan comforts Quinn and a mutual attraction blossoms. The pair begins dating in secret, but ultimately, the two of them decide to be open about their unorthodox yet strangely perfect relationship. The sequel film reveals they've not only stayed together, but also sees them get married. Sometimes young love lasts. Congratulations, Quogan. I love Quinn Pensky! And I love Logan Reed! Number 16, Dr. Perry Cox and Jordan Sullivan, Scrubs. Most romances don't begin in earnest after the divorce, but there are always exceptions. Dr. Perry Cox and Jordan Sullivan are both the most vitriolic and sarcastic characters at Sacred Heart Hospital. Oh my God, if I have to stay here and listen to this crap, I'll need a stronger drink. No, I hate you. I hate you too, honey. Fair enough. They're both fond of witty barbs and taking each other down a peg. And while they essentially rekindle their relationship as a mutual booty call, Jordan and Perry basically fall in love again, having multiple children together and even renewing their divorce. I pronounced you ex-husband and ex-wife. You may now do whatever the hell you want. Although they never stop insulting each other and everyone around them, it's clear they have an abiding love for each other. 
Number 15. Anthony Bridgerton and Kate Bridgerton, nay Sharma. Bridgerton. Right from the moment these two meet, they cannot help but compete with each other. Viscount Anthony Bridgerton has a reputation as a rake. Meanwhile, Kate's sharp tongue and desire to protect her sister Edwina's prospects give Anthony a poor impression of her. Are you the superstitious sort? I know some men cannot perform without their familiar tools, like a child with a blanket. <laughs> I can play perfectly well with any mallet. However, despite their frequent arguments and tete-a-tetes, their chemistry soon becomes obvious to everyone, except them. Although it takes an aborted wedding between Anthony and Edwina for them to see it, Kate and Anthony do eventually get together. Their fiery passion and 11 out of 10 chemistry have us excited to see what their married life will look like. I suppose that means they are cutting out. No, 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 no we're not, not cutting out. I just want to take this opportunity to return upstairs. And admit defeat? Never. Number 14, Leslie Nope and Ben Wyatt, Parks and Recreation. When Ben Wyatt comes to Pawnee, he's there to slash the government's budget. This puts him at odds with Deputy Parks Director Leslie Nope. The two of them immediately clash over spending. You're a jerk. I'm sorry? Easy. I'm sorry, these are real people in a real town, working in a real building with real feelings. This building has feelings? Maybe. However, a rapport and mutual respect quickly develop between them as they get to know each other, which naturally leads to attraction as well. Despite some initial drama in keeping their relationship a secret to protect their jobs, Leslie and Ben have a wonderful dynamic. Their constant support of one another and utter admiration for each other is something any couple should hope for. You did want to invite the whole town to the wedding, right? Leslie, let's get married tonight. Number 13, Mickey Milkovich and Ian Gallagher, Shameless. Ian and Mickey are from a pair of rival families. Their initial relationship is as adversarial as the rest of their families. However, even after hooking up, these two have a tumultuous relationship. From jealousy over other partners to arguments to Ian's struggles with bipolar disorder, Galovich has their share of ups and downs. But after reuniting in prison of all places, Mickey and Ian set out to make things work for good, even tying the knot. I now pronounce you husband and husband. No. Yes, now. They both may be walking disasters, but together, their dysfunctions somehow fit each other perfectly. Number 12, Chuck Bass and Blair Waldorf, Gossip Girl. Speaking of disasters, Chuck and Blair have quite a chaotic relationship. The show's resident bad boy and Queen Bee, respectively, these two are at each other's throats initially, often sparring verbally with one another. And here I thought you were getting soft. So this is your bed, huh? Leaving now. You can repay me another time. However, even after getting together, things aren't smooth sailing for them. Between several breakups and hookups, Blair and Chuck are constantly on again and off again, when they're not antagonizing each other. But come on, these two getting together was an inevitability. They're Chuck Bass and Blair Waldorf. We all knew they were bound to be an endgame couple. Slayer? You take Chuck to be your lawfully wedded husband? One word, three letters, yes. Then by the power vested in me by the great state of New York, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. I can tell you what to do. Number 11, Veronica Mars and Logan Eccles, Veronica Mars. At the beginning of this series, it's probably difficult to believe that these two would get together. After all, Logan is the one leading the charge in ostracizing Veronica from their social circle in the wake of the death of his ex-girlfriend Lily, Veronica's best friend. You seem to care a bit what I think. Tell the truth, Veronica. Did you just sign up for newspaper so you could be around Duncan? No. Nope. I'm here so I can be closer to you. However, both of them come to respect each other, and they eventually get together. Despite several breakups and drama, Logan and Veronica ultimately stay together and even marry in the fourth season. I pronounce you husband and wife. Is this where we kiss? I'm a civil servant. It's your call. Let's go for it. I'm nothing if not traditional. And then the event which shall not be spoken of ruined everything. But at least their journey up until that point was satisfying. Number 10, Sookie Stackhouse and Eric Northman, True Blood. Heroine Sookie Stackhouse has several contentious love interests during True Blood, but we ultimately settled on Eric Northman. You big lying a-hole! 
Bill, you're right, I believe I can sense her emotion. The complicated vampire earned Sookie's justifiable ire after he tricked her into drinking his blood, forming a permanent bond between them without her knowledge or consent. However, as time went on, their connection began to become genuine, leading to a romance as well as a deep level of trust and mutual protectiveness on both their parts. While their relationship didn't work out, the love between them never really faded. Number 9. Richard Castle and Kate Beckett Castle You're seriously asking me to your place in the Hamptons? I promise, no funny stuff. Just a friendly getaway. It'll be fun. Rick Castle is the show's eponymous author, while Kate Beckett is the no-nonsense detective who becomes his muse and reluctant partner in crime fighting. The two bicker frequently, and the fact that they meet due to Castle being a murder suspect doesn't start their relationship on the best note. You know, for a minute there, you actually made me believe that you were human. Castle seems keen from the beginning, while Beckett appears to be totally disinterested. Over time, however, the flirtation became a two-way street, and the relationship evolved into something more than attraction. Beckett, what do you want? You. Though their journey was not without its obstacles or drama, Castle and Beckett eventually get married. Number 8. Emma Swan and Killian Jones, Captain Hook, Once Upon a Time I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I'm pretty good at knowing when someone is lying to me. Emma Swan, the primary protagonist of the series, and Killian Jones, better known as Captain Hook, don't exactly get off on the right foot. You're not gonna guide us anywhere until you tell us who you really are. This is mainly due to him being a roguish pirate who's aiding the villainous Queen of Hearts when they first meet. Still, some shared misadventures and Hook's willingness to put Swan first ultimately wins her over, with more than a little help from his considerable charms. While their fairy tale story was fraught with danger, the two of them do eventually get there happily ever after. Emma Swan. Will you marry me? Number 7. Cece Babcock and Edward Niles, The Nanny. If we had a dollar for every time these two insult each other, we'd be obscenely rich. Every time Cece and Niles are together, the shade flies fast and free. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Just plain tomato juice, don't you have anything hard? Not for you. <laughs> Niles often sabotages CeCe's attempts to get together with his boss, while CeCe frequently disparages Niles' position as a butler and lack of money. However, it gradually becomes clear that their animosity towards each other conceals an underlying attraction. Servant. Trollop. <laughs> Bellboy. Brunette. <laughs> While their repartee never quite loses its edge, they do make a strangely fun or at least entertaining couple. Number 6. Ted Mosby and Zoe Pearson, How I Met Your Mother I will find the bastards of GMB responsible for this, and I promise you, I will take them down. Jennifer Morrison really has a knack for these kind of roles, huh? This time she plays Zoe, a protester who at first clashes with Ted due to his role in designing a new building destined to replace an older one she loves. I have the chance to build a skyscraper in the best city on Earth, and who's the one leading the charge to kill that dream? My girlfriend! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Through their various conflicts, an understanding and attraction builds between them, despite their differences in Zoe being married at the time. However, their contentiousness carries through to their romantic relationship, and ultimately their inability to see eye to eye leads to their inevitable breakup. Sometimes things have to fall apart to make way for better things. Number 5. Sam Puckett and Freddie Benson, iCarly. Never said I hate you. Yeah, you have! <laughs> like 900 times. I still have the birthday card you gave me that says, Happy birthday, I hate you. Sam is the best friend of Carly Shea and co-host of the titular web show, while Freddie is their producer. The two of them bicker and argue constantly, with Sam, who's something of a mean girl, going out of her way to mock Freddie. Your breath smells like dead feet. Sure. No girl will ever want you. Noted. I don't like your pants. Fair enough. If you were a country, you'd be able to solve a door. However, their animosity gradually develops into an attraction, culminating in a short-lived relationship. Everyone feels that way, but you never know what might happen if you don't... 
While they do love each other, their differences and antagonism force them to admit they don't quite work. Even though some fans would heartily disagree with that assessment. No I don't way! That. I've met sure your, your mom. Got she kind she's of a obnoxious and she's going on, but my mom's Harley insane. has lived next to my insane. mom for you years. Her mom Tell her. her! It seems with the Revival series, though, the show has firmly planted its flag in Team Carly Freddy. Number 4. Nicholas Klaus Michelson and Caroline Forbes, The Vampire Diaries Klaus is one of the original vampire-slash-werewolf hybrids, and Caroline is a human-turned-vampire, and together they form just one of the many complicated couples on The Vampire Diaries. And how am I doing? You're... perfect. <laughs> Which is so beyond annoying, I can't even look at you. Klaus begins his time on the series as an antagonist, and certainly no friend of Caroline's. However, after he saves her life, the two of them form a bond that eventually evolves into a romance. He's your first love. I intend to be your last. Sadly, it's a rather short-lived one, cut short partially due to Klaus's commitments elsewhere and his involvement in a spin-off. I will walk away, and I will never come back. I promise. Regardless, theirs was an engaging romance while it lasted. <laughs> Number 3. Jon Snow and Egret, Game of Thrones Would you please shut up? Would you please shut up? War can bring people together and tear them apart, and this couple experiences both. Jon Snow, a former member of the Night's Watch, first meets Egret, a wildling warrior, when he captures her north of the wall he's charged with guarding. I'm a free woman. You're a free woman. But I might be your prisoner, but I'm a free woman. If you're my prisoner, you're not a free woman. That's what prisoner means. Although she's flirtatious with him, he resists, as he takes his vows of celibacy to the Watch very seriously. However, when charged with infiltrating the wildling cause, Jon begins falling for Egret in earnest. I do know some things. I know I love you. <laughs> Tragically, John's honor and duty come between them, and he rejoins the watch, leading to a heartbreaking end to their relationship. You're not nothing, John Smith. <laughs> Number two, Buffy Summers and Spike, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. We five fo. Um, I smell the blood of a nice, ripe girl. This seminal supernatural teen drama featured several pairings that went from hate to love, like Xander and Cordelia, but arguably the most dramatic instance is between Spike and Buffy. As a personal favor from me to you, I'll make it quick. It won't hurt a bit. No, Spike. It's gonna hurt a lot. Buffy is a vampire slayer, and Spike is a vampire who has killed several slayers, and aims to do the same to Buffy. Be that as it may, circumstances lead to alliances between them on multiple occasions, and Spike begins to nurse a crush on Buffy. Giles, you'll never believe what's happened. It isn't until she goes through significant trauma that she reaches out to him in response, but she eventually shows interest in kind. While their short-lived relationship is mostly rooted in lust, Spike's love for her is genuine, albeit sometimes very unhealthy. Where do we go from here? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Sam Malone and Diane Chambers. Cheers! I'm probably going to regret this, but you could work here. Arguably one of the most famous and influential couples of this type, Sam and Diane changed television with their relationship and likely influenced some of our other entries. Remember the day I said this, you are the nuttiest, the stupidest, the phoniest fruitcake I ever met. You, Sam alone, are the most arrogant, self-centered son of a... Shut your fat mouth. Sam is the owner of the eponymous bar Cheers, and his working class attitude frequently clashes with waitress Diane's more refined sensibilities. You disgust me. I hate you. 
Are you as turned on as I am? More! Over time, however, their arguments eventually lead to an equally contentious romance. Along with their verbal sparring, the pair breaks up and gets back together many times. I'm calm. If I were any more calm, I would be dead. While they ultimately don't end up together, their back and forth journey to realizing they don't belong with each other is an entertaining one. Hey. You know. Yes. I think we both know. If there's a hater turned lover you'd have loved to see on our list, don't hate. Tell us about it in the comments. Goodbye, Bram. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.